Hello and welcome to a slightly different How I Paint Things. Today we're going to do How I Base Things. Now I have done one of these videos in the past, but this I thought might be useful for some of the more standard finishes that I go for. You'll see I have used a couple of the tufts that are available, uh, in particular this one here. I have in the past uh, badmouthed, what is it called, Mordheim Turf. But it turns out I've actually changed the way that those work and uh, Citadel's little tufts, they actually work pretty well if you use them on the right coloured base. So I'll eat some of that pie <laughs> and let you know, hey, they work pretty well. But otherwise, there's this, a real easy variety of bases here that you can use on your miniatures and I'll show you how we get those done. Now if this seems a little anticlimactic, <laughs> that's because this is how I do it. Um, if you guys know me, I'm always looking for the easy way. And these textured paints are actually really, really good. Uh, you can make your own. You can search on YouTube. There are a couple of videos on how you can make your own textured paints on the cheap. Um, I use these ones from Citadel because I've got access to them and I like, you know, uniformity across uh, an army. If I'm basing a whole army one way, I want to try and stick to them all looking the same. Now, the cool thing with these as well is that they are super easy to use. So I've got here Armageddon Dust, Sterling Mud, and Astro Granite. And here we have, you know, with the magic of television, some that we've prepared earlier. <laughs> now, it is as easy as, I've got one of these little scoopy brushy things. Uh, you can use a brush to put these on. Uh, it used to be that these were a lot thicker and they used a different material, which unfortunately didn't go on so well with the brush. But, let's give that a shake actually. And that'll bring it all up to the... There we go to the lid, that's nice and simple. So you get your base, you'd normally have your miniature on there obviously, and you'd want to be a little bit more careful when you're putting it on around a miniature, but all you do, get yourself out a dollop, and using whatever side, because there's a smaller side on these as well, you just smear it around towards the edge of the base, and if you have a little too much on, you'll find that you get some of these sort of clumpy raised up muddy areas and depending on what you're going for that can actually be pretty cool like if I stop like that you see we get this neat you know there is a bit of texture to it rather than just the sand that's in there so we'll leave that to dry you want to leave these for as long as you can I normally give them about an hour after I put them on before I dry brush or anything over the top if you can put them in the sun or something all the better they will dry quicker with a bit of heat on them now with our bases dry, it's time to apply a couple of shades. And you have options. You always have options. <laughs> when it comes to Sterling Mud, I'm not going to wash these. I've seen people use Agrax Earthshade or Nuln Oil on them, but personally, I don't think it adds a huge amount because it's quite a dark color already. So I'm going to leave those as they are. We'll get straight to dry brushing them when we do the rest of them. But for the likes of, uh, what is that one? called Armageddon Dust. You know, how bad is it? I can't remember the bleeding names. And on Astro Granite, we're going to do some shades. I've got here Seraphim Sepia, and this is the one I use most often when I want this sort of kind of deserty base. Agrax Earthshade will give us a much darker finish overall, so we'll have some fun with that. And then on the grey, I'm going to use Drakenhof Nightshade. And this is cool if you want more of a recently demolished sort of urban feel. Something a little bit more tidy than if you just slathered it in Agrax Earthshade, which you can use, by the by. Agrax Earthshade over these looks really cool, but we're going to do a blue tone just to show that off. Let's get on though. Let's get our Seraphim Sepia. And I'm not even going to bother the, uh, the old cut because this is so simple. It's a base, it's a shade brush, it's a wash, and just... On we go. Uh, you don't have to use a huge amount of this. I'm dipping back into the pot because I'm not really picking up a lot of my brush at the moment for some reason. But just go around and shade the base. All right, same thing again. We'll do the Agrax Earth Shade. I've forgotten my water. All right, I'll grab some water. We'll come back and we'll see those <laughs> when they're finished. Now, while our shades are drying on those other ones, I've got here a battered, beaten old medium base brush. You see, it looks really rough, but I like it because it still gives me a little bit of control over how much the bristles are going to flick around, really. So let's just get some Mornfang Brown in there and quickly back and forth 
over this base. Now you will notice when it first goes on that your base colors are going to look quite strong, but we do kind of want that. Um, you know, you don't want a huge amount of the original color actually showing through. The middle is what I tend to think the base ought to most closely resemble. So just by going backwards and forwards over there, look at that, nice and simple. All right, we got some texture, we got a different color, we're starting to get somewhere, but we can go better. So let's get out a dry color. Now I've got some Tyrant Skull and a dry brush, and let's do exactly the same thing. You can see I'm being pretty light with it at first, because when this goes on, it will look fairly shocking. But after just a couple of passes, you can build up some of the higher areas of color. You know, the big peaks in this muddy ground we got going, and then that's done. Um, <laughs> that's it. That is how I tend to do most of my bases. If I'm doing uh, Guys on Grassland, which is kind of default toy soldier look, this is how I do it. All right, there's no, there's no magic to it. It's not complicated. Um, people are always asking, so that's that. That's as simple as that gets. But let's do another couple of these dirty bases and we'll see what we get because there are some really cool effects you can get with these ones. So let's get over here. Again, so easy, I don't even have to cut. We've got Rise of Rust. Now this is bonkers orange. Look at this stuff. But there's our base. If I can get it in the camera properly. There we go. There's our base. Bit of a riser rust. Oh. Straight into the bristles and watch this. Uh, uh, it's very orange. <laughs> Uh, you can be a little more generous with this because we do want, like I said, you want the second color on to really be the predominant one in the color scheme. So let's just... Uh. Now this one I almost didn't believe would work. Okay, when I was shown this particular recipe, I laughed it off because I thought it was crazy. But there we go. There is our, our Rise of Rust. We have an orange base. And now... Because we don't have to wait for that one to dry at all, let's grab Eldar Flesh. And you see this is kind of like Tyrant's Skull, but it's got that slight, you know, more, well, funnily enough, skinny sort of texture to it. And actually, I need a, a properly dry brush. Let's grab the dry brush. A little bit on the brush, work it into the bristles, and then same as always, just lightly until you get the effect you want with a little bit of modulation between the high points and the bottom. And that's that. All right, this one I really like. Um, we're doing our kill teams that we've got a cool sort of, uh, what do you call it, industrial board. And it's got a not quite Martian sort of finish to it. So that rusty orange, I think, looks really cool with that. That's how I did, um, where is my kill team blokey? Now that same technique is how I did this base here. I did a little bit more uh, Eldar Flesh on this guy, but again, same principle. You can add as much as you like to get the effect you want to finish with. As always though, with dry brushing, add less to start with, because you can add more easily, but like I always say, if you mess up your dry brush, you're going to start over from scratch, and that's a pain in the neck. But one last look at the Sterlin Mud versions, and I've got here Sylvaneth Bark for this. So same procedure, you may be noticing a pattern here. Get a little bit of your dry paint into your brush. And Sylvaneth Bark I like because it's not very rich. Like as a color, it's this kind of faded brown and that looks quite appealing. Especially for what I've got planned in the next couple of seconds. This is good when you want a dark, dingy, kind of hopeless finish. So you might have guessed, this is where I'm going with my Death Army. But let's just finish that in. If you do get any big splodges towards the edges, just spend a couple of seconds brushing that paint in and uh, you'll find it blends in fairly easily. All right, don't worry too much if you make what seems like a mistake because dirt isn't uniform. <laughs> I know it sounds silly to say it, but sometimes we get caught up in these details and it doesn't matter. This is just the base. So there's our dirt. And then we're going to glue on with a bit of super glue. A couple of these tufts from Army Painter. This is the uh, Highland tuft that I'm using. 
And I like it because it's that deep, sort of battered green it's got going on. I'm just going to put the one on here. Obviously, if you have a miniature standing on the base, that's going to change where you put this, but I'm just putting it on to really demonstrate how this is going to look once it's finished. Then we grab one of my favorite technical paints. This is Valhallen Blizzard, and it has a slightly different finish to it than the other textured paints. This dries with kind of a, I guess it's little fabric pieces or something that's in there. So what you do is just get a couple of big splodges of it, and that might be too much, actually. Okay, that'll do. Um, just smear that onto the base and work it into the tuft that you just applied as well. Then grab yourself a brush, preferably one of your raggedy old, uh, raggedy old brushes. Just start working it around to get some random shapes to it. You can use your thumb, it doesn't matter. And now once that's dried, that's going to go a really hard sort of frosty white. Uh, and that, I think, is pretty cool. I might have overcooked it a little. Uh, you can see this as well on the Nighthaunt miniature that I did recently, but that's the recipe for that base, all right? It's so simple, and these look really cool when they're dry. Now, speaking of dry, our shades are dry on the other bases, so let's go back. This is the one that has had uh, Armageddon Dust and then Seraphim Sepia, and I like this one a lot. So I've got my Tyrant Skull, and let's just start building up that color. I haven't got very much on my brush, probably less than I would usually use to be honest. But let's just squiggle that around and there we go. All right, there is our nice simple, not necessarily deserty sort of base, you know, it doesn't really look like uh, proper deep sand. Now on our base that had the Agrax Earthshade instead, I think a slightly more pale washed out sort of faded appearance is going to look better. So I've got here Terminata Stone, which is similar to Tyrant Skull, but a little bit brighter. So I'm being a bit more careful about how this goes on. This will give you a more sort of muted, faded appearance. So this is good if you want a really drier area. Really drier? Goodness me. A really dry area, or a much drier. There we go. And that is finished. All right. From there, you can chuck on your tufts. Same as I have done on this one here. Um, let's have a look at the uh, urban base though. Now the way this Drakenhof nightshade dries, this is going to go really blue and we don't necessarily want it to be blue, we want it to be a slightly sort of faded one. So I've got here some Dawnstone and we'll go over this quite heavily to grey it out again. Really what we want is just that blue lurking in the recesses to give us that hint of colour. You'll see very quickly how this has that slightly more faded street appearance than sort of battlefield. So this is really good if you've got older miniatures you want to do for Necromunda uh, rather than, you know, those those molded plastic bases, which are really cool, by the by. <laughs> if you have got those, then do use them. But that's one dry brush, and then we can go to Longbeard Grey for a little bit of contrast. Just lightly drag this across. It helps if you're moving the brush always in the one direction. And there we go. Jobs are good. All right, we're ready to put a model on that, or we've painted around our miniature, and there we have it. Here's done. Now from here, you can turn around and paint around the rims of the bases. I tend to think it looks good if you pick a complementary color, uh, browns or, you know, darker grays. Some people like the really crisp black finish, and that's up for you to decide. As you've seen in most of my models, I do choose a color, though. So hopefully, guys, something there was useful to you. Uh, like I said, I do try the easy way. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, I will always find a way to do it just straight out of the pot, and these textured paints are how I do most of my bases. Uh, there is an earlier basing video, which I will link at the end of this one here, but as far as the most common way that I go about doing this, and the ones that people are always asking me about, here it is. Okay, No mess, no fuss, no secret tricks, just paint in a dry brush. All right? So, as ever, if anything was useful to you there, feel free to drop a comment in the old box below. My Facebook and Twitter are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.